Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And a happy new year to everybody. Um, that is, uh, we're coming into that new year, thanking God for another day of life. Amen. And today uh, we're recording for our Shabbat service. And again, we want to thank everybody for joining us. We're Bethel Temple Fellowship, and we're located in Jefferson, Texas. I'm Rabbi Linda, and very happy uh, to have you all join with us. Hope and pray anything that is said, the Word of God is a blessing to you. And we pray for a prosperous uh, New Year in health and prosper in every way. This is the desire of the Lord for us. So thank you again, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up with the sound of the Shafar. Just um, showing that it's time to gather together in the name of Yeshua. Shabbat candles, and we're just saying that Yeshua is the light of the world, amen. And without him, there's only darkness, but with him, there is light, amen. Mm. Thank you, Yeshua. Baruch Atah Adonai, Elohena Malek HaLam, Asher Kedishim, Bermitzvotah, Betzavano Lahamit, Yashel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to light the Shabbat candles. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do Shema. Thank you, Father. Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Deuteronomy 6 4, and what does it say? Hear, O Israel, our Lord God, God is, is one. one. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do what the Bible tells us to do is pray, and we're going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And then we're going to pray for our nation. Adonai, we come to you now through your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, and we pray for your shalom to be upon the holy city of Yerushalayim. We pray, Lord God, for our Jewish brothers and sisters, Lord God, who cry out for you, the Mashiach, Lord, that you would just reveal yourself unto them, Yeshua, that you are the promised one that they have prayed, to, for, prayed for for so long, Lord. We ask in the name of Yeshua that there would be a revelation of your Ruach HaKodesh in each of their spirits, Lord God, and that we ask, Lord God, from the north, the south, and the east, and the west, throughout the land of Eretz Israel, that your shalom would be there, Lord God, not only just amongst Jews, but also amongst the Arabs, Lord God. We pray that they also would accept you, Yeshua, as the Prince of Peace, with your shalom that surpasses all understanding. And again, we pray according to your commandments, Lord God, in the, in the Torah, as we say, Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim, Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you because we can go to you, Heavenly Father, for the answers to all tonight. Lord, we pray for America, we pray for your people. Watch America stood strong in you, Heavenly Father. Now we have to travel back, Lord. They have to decide to do what they want to do. And I pray, Heavenly Father, America will humble myself and turn from the wicked way. I once again turn to you, Lord, and recognize. But you are the only answer, the only hope for America once again. In the name of Christ, amen. 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 Let's go ahead and open up also with our, our bread and juice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> you know, we um, 
As we get ready to take the bread and juice, I'm going to ask again that we prepare our hearts and, and to know that when you take the bread and juice, not to take it wrongly if there's evil in your heart and you're just taking it because it causes problems in, in your health. The Bible says that um, that's why many are sick among them because they're taking the bread and juice with, you know, they, they have unforgiveness in their heart or there's different things going on. So let's make our hearts right with the Lord and ask him to forgive us because he says if we don't get forgiven, how, I mean, we have to be forgiven so, and we have to forgive others so that he will forgive us. So let's keep that in our heart and our mind. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord God, in your name, Father, that you would help us, dear Heavenly Father, to do according to your will, Lord. If there's anything evil in our hearts, Lord, we ask that you cleanse it. Cleanse us, Lord God. Help us to have a heart after you, Father. Lord God, that we will be healthy, Lord God, in every area in our body. Thank you, Father. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, hamotzi lechem men har aretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the bread of the earth. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for who you are, Lord God. We thank you that you are the bread of life. You are the healer. You are the one, Lord God, that has forgiven us our sins, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that if it wasn't for you, we would be hopeless, but we thank you, Lord, that we have our hope, which is in you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, let's partake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Baruch Atah Elohim, Melech, Elam, Lord, Peri, Hagafu. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the fruit of the vine. We thank you, Lord, for you are the vine, we are the branches. We thank you, Lord, for your precious blood that was poured out for us, Father. We thank you that your blood is applied to us, Lord God, that your blood never loses its power. We thank you for the cleansing and the healing, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your precious blood. In your name we pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord God, through this new year, Lord God, that you would just give us the strength, Lord God, the cleansing that we need to be more like you. In your word, Father, as a bread of life. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's partake. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Again, I want to thank everybody for it. Um, joining us and being faithful in joining us and those who have commented on our Facebook thank you um, and also invite others uh, we appreciate that uh, we believe that the word of the Lord is good amen and we want it to go forth to as many as who would receive it and we thank you for praying for this ministry Bethel Temple Fellowship and for all those in it, and we pray for you also. And um, we just thank God that we can be the family of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our parashat portion for this week. <clears throat> and it was Viera, and I appeared. And the Torah portion is Exodus 6, 2 through 9, and then 9 to 35. Ezekiel 28, 25 through 29, and 29 through 21. And the Brit Hadashah portion was Romans 9, 14 through 33. And so Brother Hunter will come and he's going to read our Torah portion, which starts in Exodus 6, 2 through 13. And of course, again, there's just a whole lot here, so later we're going to do a little bit more, but this is the portion that we're going to read for, for today. God spoke to Moshe, and he said to them, I am Adonai, I appear to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov as El Shaddai. Although I did not make myself known to them by my name, yud heh vav Adonai. Also with them, I established my covenant to give them the land of Canaan, the land where they 
wandered about and lived as foreigners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians are keeping in slavery, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to the people of Israel, I am Adonai, I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians, rescue you from their oppression, and redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am Adonai, your God, who freed you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land, which I swore to give Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. I will give it to you as your inheritance. I am Adonai. Moshe said this to the people of Israel, but they wouldn't listen to him, because they were so discouraged, and their slavery was so cruel. Adonai said to Moshe, Go in and tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the people of Israel leave this, his land. Moshe said to Adonai, Look, the people of Israel haven't listened to me, so how will Pharaoh listen to me, poor speaker that I am? But Adonai spoke to Moshe and Aaron and gave them orders concerning both the people of Israel and Pharaoh the king of Egypt to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have a lot in here. We know that it talks about the genealogy of Moses and Aaron. It goes on to the plagues that start. But we're going to go ahead on to the message for this evening. And so we're going to start with uh, the Bible says, let my people go. So in this new year for Israel, it's basically for Israel, it started in uh, September, which was now, is now the year 5782. And for the United States, it will be in January, which will be 2022, in just a few days. So God says, let my people go. So in this new year, we, we pray that we would, God has already done it. We have to receive what he's done for us. Yahweh's people were taken into captivity and bondage because of their disobedience to Yahweh. But Yahweh loved them so much, he still made a way to bring his people out from bondage and, and from the slavery. He sent a deliverer uh, to them, and we know that was Moses, just as God sent a deliverer to us in our day, which was Yeshua, our deliverer, our savior forever, amen? So Yahweh spoke to Moshe and said, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. That's what he said. I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. But my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. You have to, there's, there's a whole lot in here, so you probably want to uh, pray and meditate and ask God to explain more about it. But Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they seen by faith the covenant promise. They knew God Almighty, but they never seen the whole nation of Israel established in its fullness as the promise, as the Almighty God had given them. Because it actually began with Jacob's 12 sons when they went back to Israel after Jacob's death. So basically, the forefathers didn't know Adonai in the fullness of the covenant only by faith, but they knew he was God Almighty, who cannot lie. That would keep, you know, he would keep his covenant. So Yahweh's promise to them was the covenant to bring their generations. So again, Yahweh's promise to them was the covenant to bring in their generations into the fullness of who Yahweh was, to be a godly nation. One nation, basically, under God, the promised land, where they would be free to worship Yahweh and to keep his commandments. So Yahweh introduced himself as the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the people would know him as the God of their forefathers and that they would know him as a personal God, also keeping covenant with them. So not just the God of their fathers, they wouldn't know him just as the God of their fathers, a mighty God, but also a God who loved each one of them. So it was a personal also to them. So the forefathers, again, they knew God personally, 
but they didn't personally experience the fullness of the covenant that was promised to them. They received Yahweh's promises by faith. Now their descendants knew the God of their fathers, the mighty God, but not a personal God. Now they were to know him as the Lord Yahweh. They will get to know him in a personal level, just like us. Before we were saved, we knew there was a God, the God of our mother and our grandfathers. We knew that there was a God, but when we received him, he revealed himself to us personally. So we knew him and we know him as our savior, our God, our deliverer. He loves us personally too. Not, I mean, he loves the nation, he loves the world, but he loves us personally. So Lord, Yahovah means the existing one, the proper name of the one true God. Yahweh means I am who I am, the existing one. So Yahweh is built on the word I am. Exodus 3.14, and God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent you, sent me unto you. So prior to the name Lord, the Israelites called their God Elohim or El or El Shaddai, which often translates as God Almighty, which was basically a title, not a personal name. So I did not show them the full meaning of my name. That's what the New International says. The complete Jewish Bible says, I did not make myself known to them by my name, Yahweh. I am who I am, ever present with you. So they ended up knowing him in a personal level, not just God Almighty, but I am who I am, and he loves them. When God gives his name to the people, it is to convey his uh, dominion over all things the source of his power, and his eternal nature. I am, he is the self-sufficient, self-sustaining God, who was, who is, and who will be forever. So when Moses takes the people to the mountain of Yahweh, now they will know God personally. He comes down on the mountain, he talks to them. Moses goes up into the mountain, and Yahweh gives them his Torah, his commandments. They already knew or know him as God Almighty, the God of their fathers, but now they know him as Lord, the Torah, the existing one. I am who I am. They know him as who was, who is, and will be. So Revelations 1.8 says, in the Hebrew it's all of Tab, but in, in the other uh, translation it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. You see, this is the same thing that Adonai said, or Yahweh said, Yeshua is repeating. Yeah, uh, Revelation 22, 13, Yeshua said, I am, I am Alpha and Omega, I am the beginning and the end, I am the first and the last. So Yeshua is declaring equality, equality with the Almighty God of the universe, Yahweh. So Yeshua basically quotes from Isaiah 44, 6. <clears throat> when he says that in Revelations, he's quoting from Isaiah 44, 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and besides me there is no other God. So Yahweh brought Israel out of bondage with his outstretched arm. They knew and they seen God Almighty and his miracles. But it's amazing because at the mountain of Yahweh, they knew him personally. It's similar, again, to us today. Most people may believe there is a God Almighty and powerful, powerful, but they don't know his name, by his name. I am that I am. They don't know him by his name, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty Yeshua. Some might think he was just born in uh, Bethlehem, but he was before he came in flesh. He was already existing. So until uh, people receive Yeshua as their personal savior and deliverer, when we meet him in his personal presence, then we don't know just of him, but we know him personally. And we're filled with his fullness. He has uh, revealed his fullness to us. He has revealed himself fully to us through his spirit. Ephesians 3.19, and to know the Lord 
and to know the love of Yeshua, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. John 14, 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? You see, they're going through the same thing. They're not just knowing of him, but they're knowing who he is personally. And Jesus is even telling Philip, he said, I've been with you so long and you don't know me, Philip? So he says, you, you seen, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So those who see Yeshua have seen the fullness of the Father in Yeshua. So the past, present, and future, really this is what's, what's on my heart. The past, present, and future. On the Gregorian calendar, which is used in most of the world, we are entering a new year. What will this year bring to you? And even in September, we entered the new year. What is this new year going to bring for us? With the help of Yahweh, I will be declaring the word of the Lord and standing and trusting with his help more and more. So if you remember when the Israelites are freed by the blood of the lamb that was applied to their doorpost of their house, and Yahweh given them another chance, he gave them a new beginning, he gave them a new life. After they experienced the holy presence of Yahweh, even after they experienced his presence, they looked back. They looked back at the past. Even after Yahweh had brought them through all the plagues and all the disasters, after he redeems his people with his blood of, of the lamb that was applied to their homes, after the Ten Commandments, after their divine experience with Yahweh himself, they still look back at their past. They still carry some of their past with them. Even when Yahweh says, I've heard their groaning because of slavery. Even when Yahweh said, I will bring you out from bondage and, del and deliver you from slavery of Egypt. In praise the Lord, in Yahweh's love and faithfulness, he remembered his covenant with his people. You know, that happens to us today too. Even after our salvation, a divine experience with Yahweh, the miracles that he does for our lives, and um, he heard our groaning and delivered us, some of us still go back to the past. And then we carry that past with us in our walk. So now on their journey through the wilderness out of Egypt, they, they start looking back at their past. When Yahweh sent Moses to deliver the people, now remember they were hurt. They did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. But Yahweh still loved them and, and had compassion for them to deliver them. Because of their broken spirit, they lost hope. They couldn't even hear from the Lord. They lost courage. And they lost their will to fight. All they could dwell on was their hurt, which was blocking out the voice of the Lord. Broken spirits can come from, um, as it was in Egypt, from constant abuse, physical, mentally, and then being in bondage, thinking that there's no hope, and that you and you can hardly wait, or you think you can't, you can't even go from day to day, and then you start losing hope, and you just want to die. A lot of people are going through this because of the COVID, because of sicknesses, because of all these other things that's going on. And they're being abused maybe by the government, by non-believers. They're being persecuted physically and mentally. And in that, you know, in that bondage, they feel like there's no hope and they can hardly go on. But the word of Yahweh tells us also that people that lose their hope in the morning, Deuteronomy 28, 67, it says, In the morning you will say, Oh how I wish it were evening. And in the evening, you will say, oh, how I wish it were morning. Because of the fear overwhelming your heart and the sights that your eyes will see. And then finally, Adonai will bring you back in the ships to Egypt, the place of which I said to you, you will never see again. And there you will try to sell yourself as slaves to the enemy, but no one will buy you. Today is the same. Yeshua saved us. He delivered us. But on our journey, we're carrying the past with us. We're carrying that hurt. 
We're carrying the pain, the disappointments, losing all hope and the will to fight. And you just want to give up and you just want to die. You say there's no reason to go on. You uh, see with your eyes. You think, what's the use of getting up in the morning? I wish it was night. And then it was night. You wish it was morning. You think, what's the use of getting up when I might lose my job or the government is forcing you to take shots or different things that are going on? And you just feel that there's no reason. But again, that's not God. That's the enemy. And so when you do that, you're actually going back and you're selling yourself to the enemy. You're putting yourself back in bondage and slavery that Yahshua brought you out of, which he delivered you from. So you then you start losing hope in Yeshua, and that's bringing a curse on yourself. So weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This is where we have to know that Yeshua loves us, know him personally, not just of what he did and what he can do, but know what he's doing for you even now. Get your hope and faith and love back in God. The Israelites were overwhelmed with sorrow, overwhelmed with pain. They were overwhelmed with labor, toil, hardship when they were slaves in Egypt. But yet on their journey, when God brought them out, they cried to go back to all that misery. They were tired of going and going and never getting to their destiny. They wanted their flesh to have pleasure. You know, they remembered before they were slaves how the flesh was full of satisfaction. They had good food and they were living in Goshen. They had everything good. Yahweh took them out not to go back and sell themselves as slaves again to the enemy. They remembered how it was before slavery. But going back to Egypt was not going to be the same as before they were slaves. The enemy was just uh, lying to them. The season of that happening in Egypt was over. There are seasons for different things, and that was over. Let it go and receive what Yahweh has for you. That is better than, than you had before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So he has something better physically and spiritually for us. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yahweh was taking them, his people, for a better place, just like he's taken us for a better place. They looked into the past. See, Yeshua redeems us and he gives us freedom from bondage, not to look back to the past, but to the great things that he has in store for us, to look ahead what he has. If you had a good past, then the future will even be better. But don't bring the ugly past into your new that God has given you. So on your journey, going through this wilderness, you may get weary, and the enemy recalls and whispers evil, evil things of your past memories. You get weary, starting to think of all the hurt, the think, and think nothing will ever change. You start thinking you just can't make it. You just can't take another step. You just can't deal with the sickness and the pain no more. You just want to give up. You're tired and don't want to try. You've lost all hope that things will even get better. We have to trust Yahweh. We have to trust him. His grace is sufficient for us, he says. You know, 40 years and the Israelites were still struggling to get into the promised land till they finally gave up, lost hope, died in the wilderness. So many times after salvation and deliverance, people carry things from their past on their spiritual journey, looking in the past, what happened and how you were hurt, and that only digs up more hurt, adding to the broken spirit, adding to hurt emotions, defeat, condemnation, sickness, when Yahweh has already delivered, delivered you. If you look at the past trauma and not let God heal you, your deliverance is incomplete. If you're carrying your past trauma, if you haven't let go of it, and you're still being that old man, your deliverance is not complete. You're going to carry that with you through your journey. You, you'll carry it with you to the present, from the past to the present and into the future. Then what hope will you have in the present or in the future if you're carrying that with you? When you carry the hate, hurt, sick, emotions, sickness, hopelessness, 
and you can't treat others kind and are selfish and you don't care about anybody else but yourself, blaming everyone because of your hurt and your pain, mad because you didn't get what you wanted, or your flesh can't be satisfied because you didn't get a thousand, a one hundred thousand dollar car or a million dollar home and you didn't get it, so you're gonna be mad about it, or you didn't get the big title job you think you deserve. This is worldly thinking. Love God first, he says. Love God with all your heart, amen? And all these things will be added unto you. So you're mad at who you married, you're mad at divorce, you're mad at your children, mad at God. Materialistic and only, uh, sometimes that comes from materialistic and only, um, you want to only be proud and arrogant that you want to prove you can do all things. You can get what your flesh desires. It's all about you. You want to prove you can do it. What happened to God in the picture? When, uh, when you accomplish, you want to prove you can accomplish, not Yahweh. You want to be a God? When you lean on God, he's going to take care of it, everything for you because you know that you can't do anything without him. And we have to believe that. We have to know we're, where we are because of God himself. So not caring about what Yahweh has done for you, that means you love the world more than God. And that will keep you stuck in the wilderness, just like the Israelites were until they died. While the next generation went into promised land, went into the promised land and received blessings more than they could imagine. So, what will your future bring? What will the future bring? Yours. As you continue in the wilderness, will you have hate, hurt, and wanting vengeance to see others hurt and to pay for the way that they treated you? Going back to the past will cause you to go back to the enemy and sell yourself to his bondage. That will bring in a curse on you. So what do you want? What's going to bring your new future, your new year? 40 years you may have been praying and asking God, but you're not being a doer and you're not submitting to him. What is the prayer going to do for you? What is prayer going to do for you if you don't repent? And you don't make Yeshua, and you don't turn from your wicked way, but you're keeping all the evil inside. What good was it to do praying 40, 50 years? You haven't let go of it. You have to become a new man in Christ. Um, you're not having a change of heart. You have to have a change of heart. I mean, people can say, I've been saved 100 years, and if they're not changing, their salvation is incomplete. And they need to have the Holy Spirit moving them, changing them, getting a new life in Christ. Amen? A new man, for the old man has passed away. All things become new. Again, what is it? What good is it praying if, you, if you're not forgiving and loving the one who hurt and asking Yeshua for your broken spirit to be healed from harsh slavery to the enemy? You know, the enemy has kept many people of God's people in slavery to him because of their past, because of the way the enemy has uh, kept telling them, you're hurt, you can never get healed, and all this other stuff that the enemy is telling them. Your heart can't be healed, but Jesus came to heal the wounded hearted and to set the captive free. But we have to do our part. We have to let God. We have to love God. We have to forgive so that we can be forgiven. Yeshua said, if you don't forgive, he won't forgive you. Because we build up this wall, and we're the ones stopping God Almighty from helping us. So we have to knock that wall down, like the wall of Jericho. Let the Holy Spirit move you, break it down. Yeshua says, again, if you don't forget, you can't just be a hearer, but you have to be a doer. Because if you're not being a doer, you're deceiving yourself. All those years, what are you accomplishing? You have to have a complete deliverance, amen, that he delivered you out of to go to that mountain that we talked about a week or so ago. <clears throat> so if you've been saved and you have not gone to the mountain of Yahweh, again, your deliverance is incomplete. You need more of him. You need to be cleaned. You need to be forgiven. You need to have that washed out and enter to be a new creature in Christ. So get out of the past. Let go of the past hurts and bondages. Don't give in to the torment of the enemy. He just wants you to remember that so that he can torment you. And he's playing with your mind. 
He's playing with your mind, trying to tell you the opposite of the word of God. Just get rid of him in the name of Yeshua and let the Holy Spirit heal you. So you will, you know, because if not, you're going to sell yourself back into the slavery of hurt, to the uh, slavery of, of bitterness and hate. So where Yahweh said, you will never see it again. But if you insist he's going to let you go to the enemy, he said, you're, gonna, you're not going to see this ever again because he's completely delivered us from it. But if we haven't received that deliverance and that healing, we're going to go back to it, and then we're going to sell ourselves, and we're going to keep insisting we're going to go back there and go back there. Finally, the Lord's going to let us go. You know, he's going to say, okay, if that's what you want, and he's going to let you go, and you're going to go straight to the enemy. And your future then will lead to the mouth of hell. Uh, you'll be worse off than you were at the beginning. If you don't let go and let God take over your present and future, is going to be miserable. It's all, your past was already miserable. Your present time now and the future is going to be miserable if you don't let God take care of it. Give in to God. Let go. Let God's healing take place. This is about your past, present, and future. So what is the future going to bring? I know this might sound crazy, but as I was studying this parish shop, <clears throat> The path of the Israelites, past, present, and future, for some reason it reminds me of Ebenezer Scrooge, the Charles Dickens novel, A Christmas Story. I haven't heard, I haven't heard that story for a long, long time, but the story itself, uh, it, it had to talk about three spirits. And so I brought it up because I want to talk about those evil spirits. I just brought it up because I want to talk about those evil spirits, Ebenezer, uh, Scrooge is just an example of hateful people, selfish people, um, and I don't, you know, I don't think it's wrong for me to use that as an example. It's how you perceive it. And um, hopefully this year, Yahweh's people will quit complaining and condemning others to hell. That's God's job. Let, let God take care of it. Amen. But he was, Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge was just plain hateful, mean. So there are people like that, just hateful and mean, and they call themselves believers in Yahweh. That's not God's character at all. So we as believers, we don't believe in that story, and there are no good demons, there's no good spirits, and there's no ghosts. There are spirits of men, but once they are gone, they won't be back. So you can't call on them. You can't talk to them. Ecclesiastes 9.5 says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Hebrews 9.27 And the just, as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Job 7.10 He returns no more to his house, nor does his place know him anymore. So, my point is, if you think you're talking to your loved one that is dead, no, it's not your loved one. It's a demon, a familiar spirit. If you're having weird dreams, now listen to this, people don't talk too much about it, or if they do, um, some may not hear it, but if you think you're uh, talking to your loved one that is dead, again, it's not your loved one, it's a demon, a familiar spirit. If you're having weird dreams, sexual dreams of your loved ones and talking to them, communicating with them, and they're dead? No, it's a demon. Don't be fooled. Demons try to come in, in dreams. And a lot of people have said, oh, I love you so much, I dream about you. This is dangerous. It's more than likely it's a demon trying to fool you. If that person's alive and you love them, um, you can talk to them in reality. Talk to the live person. Um, if you love them, you should be communicating with the live person, not a thing in a dream. That's not reality. It really don't even make sense. If you think about it, it's a fantasy. You can't live in a fantasy without troubling your mind, troubling your mind and your heart. It's an open door for the demons. Now, see, that's another worldly thing that people talk about and try to make it a natural thing. It don't even make sense. If you love a person and you're talking to them and they're alive, that's normal. But if you're <clears throat> communicating with them in a dream and that's not them, 
It's a thing. It's some kind of spirit. It's not of God. There's no reason for that. Then you find people entering into all kinds of demonic, um, evil things that happen that shouldn't happen. And then they're ended up tormented by the enemy. And I've talked to people that had this stuff happen. And uh, I know it's real because of the word of God tells us. So I wanted to mention this because the Bible talks about evil spirits. There were tormenting spirits for the Israelites, which came from disobeying Yahweh, having idols, and all this other uh, stuff. So selling themselves to the enemy as a slave for the lust of flesh in their past, as they were slaves in Egypt, they had many sufferings. They had broken spirits. They had torment. They had loss of hope. But when they turned to cry out to Yahweh in forgiveness, Yahweh showed up. He'll show up. He'll show up for us if we cry out to him in sincerity and ask him to forgive us from all of our heart. And we ought to turn from our wicked ways. And he'll heal our hearts. Amen? So in the wilderness, they had, uh, the people had also other being tormenting spirits, plus the same spirits they dealt with in the past and more. So, they allowed those past evil spirits back after deliverance, and those evil spirits brought seven more wicked than themselves with them. There was lots of different things. I can't even name them all, but we know the jealousy, pride, complaining, disobedience, hardening of the heart, and then it goes on and on. So the same spirits you fought in the past will be in your future, and they will bring back seven more wicked than themselves to torment you if you allow them to. Remember, Yeshua freed you from that slavery and bondage. So you have to get rid of them. If not, you'll continue to be in slavery and bondage to them. You're going to continue being hurt. You're going to continue having bitterness and wishing the night was day and the day was night because you don't want to live and it gets worse and worse. Let go or you will be putting your, a curse on yourself instead of the peace, the shalom that Yahweh has given us. He's given us his shalom. It's promised to us from him. Yahweh commanded the devil. He commanded the evil spirits to let God's people go. So you're the one that's keeping this stuff in your life. Not the devil. Not what happened. We are when we don't let go of it. And so if you're free and you don't leave or you don't walk out from that evil stuff and that evil stuff that torments your mind, when you don't walk the narrow road, you put yourself back in bondage. So your past, present, and future depends on which spirit you got that you're going to let lead you and guide you. Which spirit you follow. Are you going to follow the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, or are you going to follow an evil spirit that whispers lies and all kinds of stuff in your ear? So on the Gregorian calendar, we're coming... To, new, to the new year. So let the past life, the old man, pass away and let Yahweh do a new thing in the present time. Even through all the chaos that we're going through, we can have peace, we can have joy that the world don't give. Only God can give us. And we can be ready for the mighty things that Yahweh has for our future. Ask Yahweh to let your deliverance be complete. Know Yahweh by his personal name. Amen. Know him by his personal name. Know him personally. Yahweh. Amen. He was and is and is to come. He is coming soon. I am that I am. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. And so he will deliver you from uh, being a mean, unbearable Scrooge, hating everybody, thinking everybody's after you. He will deliver you from that hate, that condemnation, complaining. He will heal your broken spirit. Amen. Proverbs 18, 14 says, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. So if there is a, a person that is a strong will, a strong spirit, he can, he can sustain or he can deal with the infirmity. But if it's a wounded spirit, who can bear it? Only God can heal us from a wounded spirit. So may you have a blessed and new beginning, better than the year before. May your salvation be complete in 
Yeshua and in healing. And I hope and pray this is a blessing to you. No, this is just not saying to say it, but to understand we have to move on. If you've been saved 20, 50 years, two years, there's more to, to serving God. There's more to life. He's wanting to take us to a better place. We need to learn to let go of the hurt. It's already done. It's gone. And God heals us from that. Why people don't want to be healed from that, I don't know. I mean, we just say, God, I need you to cleanse me. Take it away. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to hate. I want to be ready to go to heaven. Because those people, when you have that against somebody, those people still have you in bondage. Those people that hurt you are still holding you in slavery. Don't. God set you free. Walk away from it. Amen? Don't let those evil spirits control your life. Don't let them um, bring more ugly things with them. Be free in the Lord. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Ruach HaKadosh. You have joy, happiness. He gets us through everything that's going on. So when we wake up, we can say, this is the day the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. We don't have to go, oh, no, another day. No, we'll be glad that the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. What does he have for us today? And that he's coming soon. What if this is the day that he comes back for us? Hallelujah. We have to look up because our redemption draws nigh. Amen. Thank you, Father. So again, we pray that you will have a great uh, New Year and a closer walk with the Lord. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Um, we're going to pray for... We're just going to say a prayer for those that God would help us what he has for us in the new year. He has great plans, amen? He has great plans for us. So let's receive him. Let's receive what he has for us. It's not about us. All, all is about us. It's about God. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Father, as we come to you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you are I am that I am. You are not only God Almighty, but you're personal to us. You love us personally. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation that you've given us. Help us, Lord God, this new year to walk in your ways, to declare your word on us and nothing else but your word, Father God, that we have victory and deliverance in you, Father. Lord, that we uh, are to the place where you want us to be, Father, that your Ruach could just, just move, move upon your people, Father God. Thank you for the healing, Lord, as we declare your word. By your stripes, we are healed. We declare, Lord God, your holiness, Lord God, we, that you would be with us and upon us, Lord God, cleansing us and making us more like you. Open the doors, Lord God, that no man can open. Shut the doors that no man can shut. We thank you, Lord God, for these great things that you're doing this year, Father. Though it may not look good, we know that you are good and that you have great plans for us, good plans for us, because the plans that you have, Lord God, are for good, not for evil. Thank you, Lord God, as you do mighty miracles this year, that your name will be lifted up. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for healings on your people. Thank you, dear God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the deliverance on your people. Thank you, Father. And the priestly prayer. Yabarehaka Adonai Veyesh Mareka. Yaer Adonai Pana Eleka Vanuka. Isa Adonai Pana Eleka Veyakshin Leka Shalom. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. We thank you for everything, Father, that you're doing. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Uh, Brother Hunter, thank you, Father God. <coughs> well, Shabbat Shalom once again. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in to this video. Um, we want to just make a few announcements. Uh, first of all, um, all of our videos we upload to YouTube on our YouTube channel. So if you search YouTube Bethel Temple Fellowship, Jefferson, Texas, you're going to find us. Um, also, we upload these, um, whether we do live stream or um, recordings, we do those at our Facebook page, which is facebook.com uh, slash, uh, which is uh, 
backslash and then Bethel Temple Fellowship. And we also have an Instagram account as well where we post news, announcements, events, and things of, of that nature. Uh, the next event that we have coming up is going to be Purim, and we'll be posting the dates for that here as the new year starts out and give you more information on that. Um, as you are seeing this, um, as the new year is fastly approaching, you can still make a tax-deductible contribution to this ministry by going to BethelTempleFellowship.org, click on Donate at the top, and we have several ways in which you can make an electronic contribution uh, to the ministry here. And still, that is 100% tax-deductible, and you will receive a receipt uh, from this congregation uh, showing your giving. We thank you so much for those who have been giving um, here uh, recently and those who have given over the past year. It's made this live stream possible, the technology possible, and the ability for us to get the message out to not just here in Jefferson and in Marion County and throughout the state of Texas, but all throughout the United States and even other parts of the world. So we thank you so much for your generosity and for your faithfulness, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you again, and Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat and have shalom. a happy new year. God bless you. And remember, Shabbat, 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 Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.